available. Subscribe to our channel for latest video series on Gain UGC Net and more. Also press the bell icon so that you never miss an update on any latest video. For more information you can visit our website or call on the numbers below. People, so today we look at a topic from quantitative aptitude. This is a new topic that we are covering today which is percentages. Uh, now why we are using percentages, what does this mean, what are the different models that have been asked in examination, everything we are going to look one by one. Right? So firstly we understand what does a percentage mean. See this percent, percent, this cent represents 100. Okay, This is what uh, we calling 100 in French, cent is 100. Right? So percent means per 100, that is for every quantity, each quantity we are taking reference as 100. Okay, We are trying to scale down everything with reference to 100. Fine. Why are we doing this now? See. In order to make comparisons, in order to compare growth rates, economic uh, deficits, everything, marks, quantities, what we need is, see they are going to have their different references, fine. Everything is going to be having their own reference. Now if you want to make comparison of two quantities, they should have common reference point. Only then you can compare two things, right? You cannot compare five bananas to two motorcycles, fine. They need to have a common reference. In having that viewpoint only, we are having this concept of percentages. See, I'll give you an example. Suppose there are two students, A and B. Now, the student A scored 200 marks out of 500. The student B scored 70 marks out of 100. Now, if I compare their marks directly, okay, a clearly scored way much marks than B, right? It has way more marks than B. But this is not a valid comparison. Why? Because their total marks are different, right? They are having total benchmarks. So it is not valid to compare their marks directly. Now what do I need? I need a common reference point. That common reference point is basically is commonly taken as 100. What do I do? I scale down the total marks for this examination to 100 and then compare that if this examination were of 100 marks, how many marks would has this, this candidate got? And then I can compare it with B. Right? This is how we find, uh, the, we use the concept of percentages to make comparisons, different comparisons, comparisons of growths of country, economic growths, financial growths, find marks of students maybe, right, grow, percentage growth of a country, city, school, whatever, right. So that is why using this concept of percentages. Now see, if you try to find percentage, how do you find a percentage? If you are given a fraction, you multiply that fraction with 100, right? What happens is this fraction, uh, see, you, you, we've learned about fractions, okay? Fraction is basically with reference to 1, okay? Every fraction is with reference to 1. 1 means whole, whole or complete. Fraction refers to part of whole, part of 1, how much part of 1? Now, if you want to scale it up to 100, what do you need to do is you need to multiply it to with 100. So what do I do if I need to find percentage of A? This is going to be percentage of A. Then what do I need to do? I need to multiply this fraction with 100. So 200 by 500 into 100 which is going to make it 40 percent. Okay, so this student scored 40 percent marks. Similarly, if you look for this B, see already its total marks were 100, so you do not need, but we are following the same procedure. What do you need to do? You need to multiply this fraction with 100. So you see that this student obtained 70 percent marks. Now it is valid to make a comparison between these students' performance, right? This student scored 70 percent marks whereas this student had scored only 40 percent marks. Now if you look, you can clearly see that B performed much better than A. Comparing marks could not give us this idea because points of reference were different. To bring them to a common level, to a common point of reference, we are using this concept of percentages. right? So uh, you have seen how to find percentage. If you are given a fraction, you multiply it with 100 and put this percentage sign. This is how you are finding percentages. Uh, let us look at an example. Convert 3 by 5 into 100. 
percentage. Now see uh, what we are basically doing is so it's 3 by 5 is what does this 3 by 5 represent that if you break anything if you uh, just divide one whole one part into five parts then three parts of them representing uh, are represented by this fraction 3 by 5. Now we are asking that if 100 is divided into 5 parts what are its 3 parts going to be right that is what we are doing. So what do I do I just multiply this 3 by 5 with 100 and put a percentage sign right. So this is going to be 60 percent this is how you converting fractions into percentage fine and how do you convert a percentage back to fraction suppose I ask convert 60 percent into fraction. So what do you do just reverse of this procedure you remove this percentage sign and divide the number by 100 fine so this is going to be 60 by 100 or 3 by 5 right you have got back the same fraction. So this is how you find percentage of a fraction or convert percentage back into fraction ok. So uh, basically what we are trying to do is we are going to look at some models that have been asked frequently in examinations with the help of questions right. Uh, so uh, before we start we take up a very simple question suppose you are given that there is a certain number ok of which suppose I say 20 percent of a certain number is 5 then what is the number what is the number fine so I am saying that there is a number of which 20 percent if you find if you find 20 percent or 20 by 100 parts of that number it is going to be 5 then what is the number see if you just convert this into fraction firstly what I do is I convert it into fraction how do you convert it into fraction you remove this percentage sign and divide by 100. So what am I saying 20 by 100 of a number suppose that number is x I am supposing. So what am I saying 20 by 100 of x is 5, 5 right you can just replace this off with multiplication fine because this this much part of x was 5. So now if you just solve it you can see that x is going to be 25. So the number was 25 fine so uh, this is what percentage means ok then see do not confuse with 100 20 percent simply means 20 by 100 in terms of fraction ok 20 by 100 part 20 by 100 means 1 fifth 1 fifth of a number was 5 so you could easily find the number it is going to be 25. So uh, we are going to cover all the models that I asked one by one with the help of examples. So look at the first question what they are saying is if A's income is 30 percent less than that of B's income then how much is B uh, how much percent is B's income more than that of A's. See first thing that you need to learn is answer is not going to be 30 fine why because we are talking in terms of percentages we are not talking in absolute terms. If I had said that A's income is rupees 30 less than B then how much more is B than A answer would have been 30 rupees which is absolutely right. Right now we are talking in terms of percentages. So first point is answer is not going to be 30. <coughs> now what it is going to be and how do you approach these kind of questions. See there are a lot of shortcuts there are a formula that you can remember but there is one very simple trick that I would recommend you to follow I am also going to tell you the formula and shortcuts anyway but one simple trick that I uh, advise you to follow is whenever you are working with percentages and you do not need to find any absolute value see they are not asking you to calculate uh, income of A or B right. So what do you do when they are giving you percentages they are asking you answer also in percentages just assume some values to be 100 whatever you you whatever value you are comfortable with you assume to be 100 why see when we are working with percentages we are taking reference as 100 if you assume some values 100 it is going to ease up some calculations for you I will uh, just explain how it does this in this question right and ok and one more thing reference is going to change ok whenever they ask how much income more than that of A income that all this then 
the denominator is going to change. Uh, let us start with the small example. We are going to come to this question later. Suppose I say there are two people, Suresh okay, and this is Ramesh. Fine. Now both of them have separate income. Suppose uh, Suresh earns 500 per day and this Ramesh earns 700 per day. Okay. These are their respective incomes. Fine. So Suresh is earning 500 rupees per day and this Ramesh is earning 700 rupees per day. Now if I ask you, so okay, firstly I ask you who is earning more. So clearly Ramesh earns more in one day. Fine. So what do I say? I ask you how much, how much more is Ramesh earning than Suresh? Okay. Listen to the carefully. Listen to the question carefully. How much more does Ramesh earn? See, I have not talked about percentage. So you just answer me in absolute terms. How much more is he earning? He is earning rupees 200 more earned than Suresh, right? Than Suresh. So he is earning 200 rupees more, fine. Now if I ask you how much percent more, okay. If, if I just modify this question and ask how much percent is Ramesh Ramesh's income more than more than that of Suresh. Now see we know that what is the concept of percentage why do we uh, why are we finding percentage to scale it down to a reference of 100 to a scale of 100 to compare it right now in absolute sense you know that this this person is earning rupees 200 more fine but you need to have a scale on scale of what fine you cannot directly multiply it with 100 to find percentages now see i have asked with reference to suresh right more than that of Suresh. Now my reference here is Suresh. So what do I do when I need to find this percentage? I am going to divide this 200 by income of Suresh. Okay. 200 by 500. Now I needed to find percentage. So multiplication with 100. Find whatever you get. You get 40%. So this person earns 40% more than Suresh. 40% of whose income? Suresh income. If you just find out, you will see that it's going to be 200 only. Right? So reference is very important. If you change this, if you change this denominator, your answer is going to change. Okay? So read, read very carefully. They ask that how much percent is Ramesh income more than that of Suresh. So reference is going to be this person. This person's income you have to divide. Fine. So this is how you, you have to approach these questions. Now see, uh, so this was just an example so that you know that what is going to be the denominator. Everybody was sure of the numerator, how much it is more 200 that we can clearly see. But this denominator you decide carefully because you have to see that who is the reference. Fine. Now we come back to our question. So what I was saying is whenever you have questions of this kind where you do not need to find any absolute value, what do you do? You just assume salary, income, whatever they are saying of one person to be 100. Fine, you read this question once and then we decide what do we assume. So they are saying A's income is 30% less than that of B. Okay, and uh, how much percent is B's income more than that of A? Okay, see you have two options. What are the two options? First option is if you assume that A's income is 100, right? Then what is going to be this salary of B? See, this A's income is 30% less than B. See, why we are assuming 100 is because 30% of 100 is simply going to be 30. 50% 50 of 100 is 50. So it makes it easier to work with percentages if one base value is 100, right? Then it is simple addition subtraction. See, some of you would say, I do not like, I do not like a person earning so less. So what would you say? You would say that at least, at least let him earn 200 per day. See, I have no problem with A earning 200 rupees. But what is the problem is, 
you, this has to be 30 percent less than some number now you need to find out that number which is which is going to be 30 percent more than this number it includes lot of calculations you need to find out what is 130 percent of 200 going to be okay i guess 260 maybe so whatever it is going to take up a lot of your uh, brain and time okay so what do i do i just i just assume it to be 100 now what i what is uh, the question says this income is 30 percent less than that of b then what should have been the income of b it must have been 130 so this is one way that you can proceed okay we'll we'll uh, see both the ways okay fine other way would be what can what can the other possibility be i assume that income of b was 100 rupees if income of b was 100 rupees what would have been a's income 30 percent less than that of b c okay one more thing one more thing that i would conclude here i'll i'll just tell you why why this this method is going to be wrong okay thinking like this is wrong why so now what do they say the a's income is 30 percent less than that of less than that of see this is very important here 30 percent less than that of b's income now 30 percent of 100 is going to be 30 less so this is going to be 70 fine now see why is this wrong and that right okay how do you judge which one of them which one of the cases you should assume okay there's only one right case here which is this one this is going to be wrong why because if you read the first line carefully they say that a's income is 30 percent less than that of b's income 30 percent of this you have to find and you subtract if you do that 30 percent of this number 30 percent of this number is going to be 39 if you subtract that income of a is going to be 91 so there's no point assuming it if 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 in any matter how uh, whatever you need to take this you cannot take income of a to be 100 it should be 91 that is what i was talking about okay that is what i am talking reference is very important clearly it says 30 percent less than that of b's income reference is b's income okay 30 percent of b's income you should find and subtract fine see these numbers have, mostly people will not be interested to work with these kind of numbers so it's better you assume like this they have given that it is with reference to B's income in the first line. So you assume that income of B was 100. Accordingly, income of A is going to be 70. Fine. So now we clear that A earns 70 rupees and B is earning 100 rupees. Now you read the uh, next line of the question. So they are asking that how much percent is B's income more than that of A's income. See, if I ask you in absolute terms again, then how much is it more? 30 rupees. They are having a gap of 30 rupees. So it is 30 rupees more, but with reference to what more than that of A's income, see again, reference is A's income. So if you need to find percentage, what do you do? You divide this 30 by 70 and into 100. Fine, you just uh, multiply this, whatever you're getting, 300 by 7. So this is going to be something, I guess, uh, 40 two point something 42.8 percent or whatever fine so uh, they also have a shortcut for this uh, if if some of you might have a good memory so you can just remember i'm going to write it as a note here uh, for others who do not who cannot remember things very easily you just follow this kind of procedure assume one thing to be 100 okay one value to be 100 so i'm writing it as a note if a is x percent more than that of b then b is less than that of a by since pen is not working x upon 100 plus x into 100 percent fine this is same thing okay if you just look if 
see if you just look it quickly what it is saying is if a is x person more than that of b that of b means you assume b was 100 then what would a be a is going to be 100 plus x now what they are saying b is less b is less by 100 uh, x x you can clearly see in absolute sense it is less by x and that of a that of a means reference is going to be a so it's going to be x upon 100 plus x into 100 they're giving they're giving the formula in same respect okay this is uh, same same thing but uh, some people are good at remembering so you just remember this formula directly okay if a is x person more than that of b then b is uh, going to be less than that of a by this much amount similarly you can see okay this is just an extension only note 2 if a is x percent less than that of b then b is more than that of a by x by 100 minus x into 100 fine does not take up a lot of brain lot of time also so some people are really good at remembering so you can just remember these formula directly and use them in questions for others i have told you the shortcut what do you do you just uh, read the first line very carefully see who is the reference whoever is the reference uh, denote them in the value 100 and accordingly you work out the question okay going to take you 20 seconds or less maybe Fine, so this is one model of the question. Now we look at the next one. So look at this question, look at the next question. So what does this uh, model mean? What do we have to do in this model is, see they are comparing two different quantities to a third similar quantity, okay? They are going to compare the first quantity with the third quantity, second quantity with the third quantity. And going to ask you the relation between the first two uh, quantities. Now what do you do? First, first thing that I would uh, like to tell you here is, just look at the question. What percent is A of B? Percent is A of B. A of B means you have to find the value of A with reference to B. See what is a, a very important thing in percentages is what is going to be the numerator, what is going to be the denominator. Once you are clear with the numerator and denominator, it is just multiplication with 100, right? So main thing is what is going to be your reference. Now they are asking that what percent is A of B, which means value of A is going to be the numerator with reference to what of B, of B means value of B is going to be the denominator and you need to multiply with them 100 and put a percentage sign so this is what you're going to do basically okay now to find this we're taking help of a third quantity c okay now what do they say see uh, just make it a habit as soon as you read the question as soon as you start going through the lines of the question start making mathematical equations relating corresponding to the english language lines okay so that saves a lot of time especially in aptitude questions as soon as you read okay see this is of all this are actually representing some symbols of mathematics is represents equal to of represents multiplication right percent you know it represents division by 100 so as soon as you get the question just make some mathematical equation so that you do not even need to go back to the question See, this comes with practice maybe, but uh, you should be such flick, uh, fluent in this aptitude is you do not need to read question more than once. How can that happen? Just try to see when you have practiced a lot, what is going to happen is you're not going to even see these words if and then. See, all these are useless words. Only this is of all these are useful words. So you'll start reading between the lines once you get into practice. So uh, just try uh, start now so that you get that uh, practice, get that fluency. Okay, so we start with the, the first line. A is, is means equal to 20%. 20% means 20 by 100. Right, this is how we convert into fractions, okay. See, percentage is not operational in mathematics. You cannot operate with percentages. To operate any percentage, you need to convert it into fraction. And how do you do that? By dividing by 100, right. 20% off, off means into C. C, 
right so this is my first equation and and means end of statement come to the next line b is b is 25 percent means 25 by 100 of c into c this is going to my second equation now uh, already when we read this question first time we find we uh, saw that we need to find out this okay we need to divide a and b fine so just perform division just divide 1 by 2 what do i do 1 divided by 2 so what are you going to obtain on lhs you're going to obtain a by b on rhs you're going to obtain 20 by 100 into c upon 25 by 100 into c c cancels out 100 cancels out so you got 4 by 5 now you've got this values just multiply with 100 so what do you get 80 percent fine so this is the simplest trick that you can follow for questions like this see uh, since this is the first question that you're seeing you have done this much also uh, i'd suggest practice a lot of aptitude so that you reach a stage you read this question once and you're writing this directly okay you're going to reach that stage just just uh, do a lot of practice so uh, see questions like these are very rare in examination they're not going to ask you such easy questions but there are going to be exams where there are going to be a lot of questions of aptitude in those exams you may get questions like this so they are just to give you some extra time for tough questions don't waste time writing all this nobody is going to check your written work okay uh, yeah in case you make a lot of silly mistakes you must write you must follow all these steps but i'd recommend that uh, you practice well so that you can write this step directly fine so this is one model if when two quantities are compared with the third quantity and relations being asked between those two quantities this is how you solve Okay, so we look at the next model of question now, which is C. What, what they are giving in this type of question is commodity, uh, there is one commodity, its price is going to increase or decrease. Accordingly, they are asking you that how should the consumption of the quantity commodity increase or decrease so that total expenditure remains same. See what concept we are using is expenditure on a commodity is going to be expenditure is actually going to be price of the commodity into consumption of the commodity right it is going to be the product of these two if price of a commodity increases consumption has to be decreased if price of the commodity decreases consumption has to be increased because we need this expenditure to be a constant fine so we use the same concept what do what would do we uh, say P1 into C1 should be equal to P2 into C2. This is the same concept that we use in work and time problems. Okay, we equate man, days and hours, right? So this is the same concept that we are using to keep the expenditure to be constant, to be a same number. If price increases, consumption should decrease. Fine, that means this product must be a constant. Now they are going to uh, give you in percentages. So as we have said, we assume one of the quantity to be 100. So that it is easier for us. Okay. Uh, if you look at this particular question, they say that price of sugar increases by 25%. So I assume that initially price of sugar was 100, rupees 100 for 1 kg and consumption was 1 kg. Fine. Now they are saying that this uh, price increased by 25%. 25% increase means new price is going to be 25 rupees more which is 125. Now they are asking you something about this consumption, new consumption C2, right? How much percent its consumption must be reduced. So let us see. If you just find out C2 from here, you see that it is 4 by 5. Okay. See, if you uh, want to find this directly in terms of percent, what can you do? You assume initial price to be 100, initial consumption also to be 100. Fine. Now, this C2 is going to be 4 by 5 into 100. Since initially also it was 100, now whatever value you get, what value am I getting? 80. 80 you are going to get, right? So, see, since this was 100, already your base was 100. Now, this C2 became 80. Now they are asking how much percent it should be reduced. This reduced by 20, waste was already 100. So directly answer is going to be 20%.
fine so this is a very easy trick to uh, follow such questions uh, we having a formula also we having a similar kind of formula that we had suppose uh, okay i am going to give you a, it give this to you as a note but i'd recommend you follow this Uh, method because see you do not need to remember anything if you are doing like this okay if you are trying to follow the formula you need to remember a lot of things fine so what we have done is that this product is going to be constant initially we assume both of these values to be hundred because we are working with percentages now if this was hundred then uh, this price increased by twenty five percent which means price became one twenty five accordingly consumption became eighty already it was hundred now it became eighty so this reduce this reduce Use uh, decrease of twenty is going to be the same. This is going to be the answer, twenty percent. Fine. So there is also a formula where, with which you can attempt such questions. See. If price of a commodity increases by p percent, p percent, then to keep to keep the expenditure to keep the expenditure as constant, its consumption. must be reduced by must be reduced by p upon p upon 100 plus p into 100 Percent. Fine. If you just put the values in this formula, also you're going to get the same answer. Okay. If the price of sugar increases by 25 percent, here value of P was 25. If you just put it in this 25 by 125 uh, into 100 is also going to be uh, give you the same answer. That is 20 percent only. So uh, people who can remember very well, who are good with very good with formulas, you can just remember this formula. And for others, I've already told you the shortcut. Fine. So there, you can make a change here. Increases or decreases, let us say decreases by W percent. Then to keep expenditure constant, consumption must be reduced or increased. Increase. I am writing this in blue. Okay. Then this is going to become W by hundred minus W into hundred percent. Fine. So both. In case the price decreases by W percent, then uh, this consumption must increase by this much percent. Okay, same logic it is going to follow, right? So this is one model of question that they are giving. So there is uh, one model or maybe two models more. We are going to look at them also. Let's right, so look at this question now. So what they have given is they are giving you the annual increase in some quantity or here they have given population of a city. So population or annual increase in some quantity is given. Okay, percentage increase is given, and uh, then they are going to give you one value. Maybe most probably they are going to give you the present value. Then they ask you the value two years before, five years before, or five years fourth, five year after five years. Okay, so uh, what basically uh, I am saying is suppose present population. Present population for a town is P, right? Now I say that it increases by 10 percent in one year. Then after one year, what is going to happen? After one year, what happens? After one year, this value, this this increase by R percent in one year, right? Then what is the increased population? R percent of P. Or I can say R by hundred of P. R P by hundred increased. Initially it was P. So what is? This is the increased population. Maybe number of kids that were born in that town in one year. Okay, increased population. Now initially population was P. Then what is going to be the total population? Total population. Let me say this P dash. Let us assume this is P dash. Then P dash becomes. P plus R P by hundred, right? Now what am I saying is I can take P common, right? So I can say this is P going to be P into one plus R by hundred. Now this is what happens after one year. Suppose I talk about another year. See, 
the point here is this r percent increment is always going to happen on the present population now the present population is not p it is p dash right so what happens after two years from this instant we we are talking about this instant okay this is the present so after two years what happens similar to this after two years let us say population becomes p double dash then what is this p double dash going to be this is going to be p dash plus r p dash by 100 or if you just take out p dash common this is going to be 1 plus r by 100 if i try to write this in terms of p i can just substitute its value this is going to become p into 1 plus r by 100 into 1 plus r by 100 if you keep on following this procedure you will see that this formula this this method can be generalized for n number of years how if, if we talked about one year what happened we had to multiply once with 1 plus r by 100 if you talk by uh, talk for two years you multiply it with 1 plus r by 100 two times so what is going to happen after n years if, if population keeps on increasing with the same rate of r percent per year per annually then what is going to be the population of the town after n years it is going to be p p which is the present population into 1 plus r by 100 into n so directly we can just use this method to calculate our answers right and if they are giving uh, they are giving they are asking you suppose they are asking you what was population before 2 years before 2 years means this present population is being given so before two years to calculate this you need to divide with this factor okay uh, let us look at this with this example so they are saying that this increases uh, by 20 percent annually which means value of r is given as 20 percent and present population this is 1 lakh 20 thousand okay so uh, they are asking you that what would the population two years for see population is increasing by this rate if if the population was decreasing you would use a minus sign here okay because the population is going to decrease since this is increasing what is going to be the population after two years it is going to be p into 1 plus r by 100 to the power 2 because they are talking about two years fine just putting the values what are you going to obtain Right, so you can just uh, solve this. Fine, so you use if you just solve this, you can get the answer. Now if you look at the second part, they are asking what was the population before 2 years. Okay. Now if they are asking you the population before 2 years, what you are going to do is, see population before 2 years would be less than the present population obviously because it is increasing per year. So what do you do? Instead of multiplication, we just need to perform the, need to perform the division. Okay. Why? See, uh, population 2 years means they are asking you to find this P and p dash is given okay now this has become the this has become the present this has become the increased population so to find p what do you do you just divide just uh, i don't think we need to do this so just to find p what you are going to do you are going to perform this fine so this is how you can find population before 2 years right so uh, this is how you performing questions of this kind now there is one extension to the same concept see uh, what did we assume here is that this population or the increase in uh, this quantity of population whatever it is is same for each year okay it is increasing or decreasing by the same amount every time right now if i just just make a small change to the same concept if this uh, quantity if this population does not change by the same amount every year but changes by different amounts different percentages each time what does happen see suppose we uh, assume that there is a quantity let us say a okay now what happens to this a this a gets increased by x percent first 
then it gets increased by y percent then it gets decreased by z percent so i ask you what is going to be the net change net percent change in value of a fine uh, we just move step by step first then we can derive a general formula for this form see if x if this a increases by x percent in the first instance right let me assume that value becomes a dash what it is going to be a plus x percent of a right this is what its value going to be now this y percent increase is going to apply to a dash not a right because it it happens after this this is a series right this is series of actions after this x percent increase has been done now this y percent increase takes place then a double dash this is going to be a dash plus y upon 100 into a now now next again what happens this is going to be decreased this is also going to be a dash so a triple dash is going to be this is also going to apply to a double dash so this is going to be a double dash minus z by 100 into a double dash fine now if you just put values what are you going to see see i take out this a double dash common so going to be one minus z by 100 putting values of a double dash this is going to be a dash into 1 plus y by 100 into 1 minus z by 100 putting value of a dash a into 1 plus x by 100 into 1 plus y by 100 into 1 minus z by 100 see if you see the final value of this number what have we actually done is see this is just an extension of the previous concept okay in previous concept also we were doing the same thing the difference was that it was increased by same value each time it was increased by x percent each time so what did we do we just put this in powers of this single term now it is being changed by different uh, percentages each time sometimes it gets increased by x percent then y percent decreased by z percent whatever so we are getting these different terms right so this is how you're going to solve problems like this now suppose i ask what is the percentage change in a you know what is going to be the percentage change in a what do you do then is what do you need to do is see this is actually the percentage change in a right this is what has changed so what do you do you just find okay if i am required to find percentage change in a then what do you do what do you need to do a triple dash minus a right upon a into 100 fine you just find this value okay final value is going to be this one only final value is this only uh, right so after you find the final value you can just find and find uh, what is going to the percentage change in a see reference is a because we finding what the, with reference to a with respect to a what value has it become okay uh, we can take an example on this one also to look at this example they're saying that there's a man who earns 1500 who used to earn 1500 now what happened he got an increment of 10 percent 20 percent and 30 percent in three consequent years three continuous years right so they're asking you to calculate his present income so we're using the same concept okay we need to find the final value of his income so final income final value is going to be this was his base salary base income that he was getting then he got an increment of 10 percent so 1 plus 10 by 100 again 20 percent and then 30 percent see since he got a raise each time we're using these plus signs suppose he did something wrong suppose he got a depreciation value market uh, uh, fell down whatever happened then we would have used a negative sign okay he got a raise every time that is why using plus signs fine so just just be little careful about little things so what do you get 110 by 100 into 120 by 100 right so if you just perform this multiplication what do you get 2574 right so this is going to be his present salary see they're not going to ask you such complicated calculations in exam uh, for example i have taken this question right they're not going to ask you such such tough calculations they're going to be very easy 
right so uh, anyway you, i hope you got this concept so if you have different uh, changes in value this is how you proceed if you have same annual growth same change you just put a power you just put three times it was increased you just put a power to this fine so uh, i think we've covered all the models that have been asked from percentages uh, in the next video we'll try to cover more of examples more of questions all the complicated questions that we get uh, in case we left something you can just leave it in comments if we have left some uh, point from percentages also if you have any doubts any questions any queries you can always leave that in comments thank you